Civilization 6, a game I couldn't stop playing until 2 in the morning. A strategy game that's been with us for quite a while now, and the Civilization series as a whole is seen as one of the best strategy game series of all time. I think the main attraction to it is you can get peace-loving Gandhi to casually chuck a few nuclear bombs over cities. He clearly hasn't eaten his Snickers in the game and is very aggressive. But there's something about the Civilization series that gets you really hyped and wired in, and you can't take your eyes off the screen. Now today, I want to discuss why on earth is Civilization VI the most popular strategy game, completely overtaking popular games like Hearts of Iron 4 and Warhammer 2. It even had a threatening rival, Humankind, but it was not a problem. Nothing can take this game off its top spot, and Humankind went down like a lead balloon. Now, Civilization VI hasn't always been popular, and upon release back in 2016, the community exploded of anger, and many people stuck to Civilization V. Nowadays, however, things are a little different, and we've gotten to the point where Civilization VI is a top-tier game. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing, and without further ado, let's get into the video. For those of you who are unfamiliar with it, I first want to talk a bit about how to play the game, although feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. Civ VI is a turn-based strategy game, in which you build up your civilization from the dawn of time. The civilizations were put in based on the fact they had an impact on humankind. So you can play as the Romans, Cleopatra, but none of these stand a chance against Genghis Khan. It is easy to conquer the world on horseback, but to dismount and govern, that is the hardest task. Yeah, Genghis Khan didn't really like getting off his horse, which is probably why his empire collapsed so quickly. Once you have chosen your civilization, you then compete with other civilizations in game, all trying to get power. You compete with them through several different ways, such as obviously warfare, where you effectively get rid of them, but also through science, culture, religion, diplomacy, and score. Towards the end of the game, there are five different victory conditions in relation to all these aspects. That's right, you can win culturally and have many painting competitions within your country. I don't think us on this channel would stand a chance. All the while, Ned Stark didn't actually get beheaded in Game of Thrones. He escaped when he was off camera and decided to get a job as a game narrator and narrate Civilization VI, adding quite a lot to the game. As the turns go by, you build up your civilization by firstly founding cities and building districts nearby. You can even have some pyramids in your garden. There's always something to decide, and having a good strategy is rather key, depending on how you want to win. There's no point trying to maximize culture when you're trying to establish a colony on Mars. Every decision you make could be the difference between losing or winning if you're up against a competent AI or good players. This game isn't even finished yet, and there's talk of more DLCs coming out soon. So what did people initially think of it when it first came out? Well, as always, the PC critics rave about it and say just how fantastic it is and groundbreaking. According to them, this game will change your life. But once again, I think it's fair to say that these reviews were simply too nice towards the game. And when it was released, the reaction to the game was a bit more mixed. Although most of the reviews were positive, there was a significant number of negative reviews. The main complaint was Civ 6 had significant AI problems that made the game unenjoyable and potentially unplayable. It was felt the AI just didn't know what it was doing and made stupid decisions all the time. This meant that the Civilization series fanbase split between Civilization V and Civilization VI, and consequently, Civilization VI suffered significantly, leading to an all-time low active player base of 14,000. However, over time, Civilization VI has come back, and with a few additions of DLCs and updates, it now has the most active player base of all strategy games. Civilization V is still a popular game, but people have now migrated in their thousands. It's a completely different game from launch, and in the next section, we discuss why it is the most popular strategy game. I think personally, there's a whole host of reasons why it has done really well. Firstly, out of all the strategy games I've played, it is by far the most accessible. The way it's made makes it feel like a board game, and choosing the lowest difficulty means you're unlikely to be bothered, or significantly threatened by other civilizations. There is a bit of a learning curve, but all strategy games have learning curves, and in a sense that makes it appealing, because if it's too easy, people lose interest. Just look at Fall Guys with the same repetitive maps. 
Fall Guys had a historic rise, but nowadays it's very, very small. Civ 6 strikes a balance between accessibility and detail perfectly in comparison to other strategy games, meaning it can reach a sizable audience while at the same time keeping hold of them. The combination of the two makes Civilization 6 unique to the strategy game market. I do want to give an example though. Another popular strategy game like European of Silas 4, which has a sizable audience on this channel, is fantastic in maintaining an audience because the campaigns are so different every time, so there's so much detail in every region of the world, and means some players have thousands of hours in this game. But it's not accessible to a mainstream market, and most people might not have a clue where to begin, or even understand it. The same to a lesser extent can be said about other main competitors, like the Total War franchise. I could be wrong though, and maybe its predecessors of Civilization V and Civilization IV have really helped it out, whereas the same can't be said for other strategy games, who don't have very successful predecessors. Another thing to note is that Civilization VI multiplayer is far more fluid and better than any other strategy game. Now it does require a lot of patience given the fact it takes a long time to finish, but you can customise your campaign to how you like it and change the size of a map and how many players you have, something that most strategy games can't do, which is more awkward to do in other strategy games. Paradox games are notorious for having a good multiplayer scene, and it's a key reason for people playing those games, but it's also notorious for lots of desyncing, slow gameplay, since a lot of people can lag, and finally lots of potential exploits, which can completely ruin the campaign. Total War also has a good multiplayer scene, but yet again, it just can't compete with Civilization VI. I think this is definitely a key reason as to why people play Civilization VI over other strategy games. In terms of game mechanics, the UI is smooth, and the amount of content that has been added to Civ VI, in a way, is truly amazing. Going into it, the unique abilities, buildings, districts, infrastructure, and different game modes all contribute to making the game good. Finally, I'd like to discuss Civilization VI in general, and just say it's a good game with lots of interesting mechanics, and allows you to implement a whole host of strategies and make you feel immersed in the game. Now it's true, none of these reasons make Civ VI completely unique, but perhaps a combination of these factors do make Civ VI unique, and no strategy game can truly compete with it. I see no reason why Civilization VI will be taken off a top spot as the most popular strategy game. And with Civilization 7 potentially around the corner, the sequel without doubt could reach new heights with the strategy game market. What do you guys think though? Do you think I'm wrong about it? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, and I'd like to shout out our Patreons.